Well, hello everyone, and welcome in. This is episode three of the Panzer II project, our little captured Panzer II. So, we have a lot to do today, so we should get started. Let's go. In the last episode, we did a lot of chipping and wear, really made this Panzer come to life and look like it's been well used. Well, in this episode, it's time to take this well-used German Panzer and turn it into a well-used captured Panzer as by the Americans. And that means adding the U.S. markings onto this. And for that, I'll be using some stencils that were made by one of my family members. That's pretty handy, isn't it? Most often, I'm a decal guy. I have good luck with decals and I'm very comfortable with them. I have used stencils in the past, but I don't have a lot of experience with them. But I have to admit, Having someone in the family with one of these stencil cutting machines who can whip out what I need overnight, well, that's a game changer. I started with the biggest, and of course maybe the more complex of the bunch of stencils to apply, and that would be the big star that's on the transmission hull. I put down a base layer of white, and then over that I just overlaid the cutout star, just tapped that down into place trying to make sure that I have everything laying down really nice and tight over the surface, and then oversprayed everything with the blue color. Really the only trick here is just to apply the blue color in this case, just in light layers, just so that you don't build up a lot of paint on the surface and have it creep underneath and make paint runs under the tape. The same process was done on the turret sides as well, adding the white first and then applying the stars in the center of the circles and then giving it a light coat of the blue color. And of course now the moment of truth, how did it work out? So of course just remove the tape and take some tweezers, tap the corners here just to pull up this slightly and let's see what we've got. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And there goes the star and hey, we have a star and a blue field. Not too bad. It could be a little better, but I can live with this. Same thing for the stars on the sides of the turret. Remove some of the masking tape around the edges here, and then I will reveal the masks in the center. Pull up that tape. And let's see what we've got here. Just find those corners on those stars. Take the tweezers, lift up the star, and hey, that doesn't look so bad. And now that we have the markings down, we can get on with the main event here, and that is the use of the oil paints to add discoloration and weathering to our Panzer II. As I get started with the oil paints here, let me just explain a little bit of how I think I'm going to try to approach this particular episode. One of the great benefits of of producing these videos is that I've had a chance to have some really nice conversations, especially with those of you who have joined my Patreon site. And one of the discussions and one of the topics that comes up fairly repeatedly is the use of oils. Now, if you've followed my work in the past or seen any of my recent videos, you'll note that I have been using oil paints for years. But whether the work is being shown in a magazine or even here on these videos, oftentimes the format itself is kind of fast paced. And so it's somewhat difficult for, you know, to really get the nuances of how certain techniques are used or materials are applied. And that's the case here with the oil paints. And so this part of the video is actually based upon some conversations and suggestions from my Patreons. And so this will be a slower paced video. Not a lot of fancy edits, not a snappy pace, but we're going to really focus in and watch the rear of this vehicle as I start to weather it with the oils. As you've been watching, I've begun to work on the little box that we scratch built on the first episode. I understand that I've been talking over the video as it's been playing and so not describing the process as it's been happening, but we'll get caught up here in just a second. In this moment, I'm using my application brush and it has just a little bit of a Winsor Newton charcoal gray. And with that, I'm just reinforcing the, the uh, dark gray base on some of those chips and just using the edge of the brush, adding just a little bit of edge wear using again that charcoal gray around the edge of the box. Leaving the box for the moment, let's go ahead and start working on the rear engine deck. And I begin by just adding a very light, this is actually a combination of light dust and white, 
Um, just around some of the surface features, the bolts along the panel lines, there's a hatch right there that I'm getting underneath, and just laying the foundations for what will end up being a dusty and grimy appearance on this engine deck. The same colors of paints and the same techniques that I'm using here on the engine deck are the same ones that I'll be using over the entire model. So beginning with the dust layer, now over top I'm using a little bit of ochre, and that just helps outline again and adds a little bit of that kind of gritty and griminess to, to the appearance. The ochre color also adds a little bit of depth to the desert camouflage color. So I'm kind of working back and forth here in terms of adding both um, enhancements to the base color, so either the grays or the camouflage color tans, or adding dust and dirt and wear effects. And those can happen all at the same time. Now, for instance, around this hatch here, this, this air vent, I'm just going ahead and just outlining it with a little bit of oil paint, a dark brown paint, and that will be the same with some of these other surface features. Now, while it looks a little rough at the moment, keep in mind this will all be blended here in just a moment with my blending brush. And again, that's part of the process too, is having two brushes at the ready. One is for applying the paint, and now this is the blending brush, which is basically dry. And I'm just using that just to blend the paints into the surface and get a really nice effects. And I keep cleaning the brush. Every time I take the brush away, that's me cleaning the brush on a dry paper towel. So it's basically a clean brush, just blending the paints into the surface. One aspect of this that may not be evident from this video is that as you're watching this, there are very few edits in this video tape. This is being shot and you're watching it back almost at real time. There's a few places here and there where I've had long pauses because, well, I've just paused for some reason on the bench. But in terms of the actual work being done, this is happening pretty much at real time, at real speed. And so as you can see, it's a fairly quick process using oils. And the key to that is, is having very dry oils. I'm not adding a lot of thinner. I'm not washing the surface. I'm just adding color and then blending it back. And as you see here, I'm once again reinforcing those dark gray chips and such with a dark charcoal gray colored paint. And while, especially with this dark gray color, it looks a little bit harsh and sloppy at, the, at this stage, once it starts blending back in, gets blended back in with that nice dry brush, then these soften nicely and just work themselves back into that nice chipping and wear that we did in the second episode. And with this blending, as you can see with the, that brush, it's just almost, it's like tapping. It's a very light stroke. I'm just tapping, tapping, tapping. In this case, reinforcing those edges, tapping off some of this color around the corners there. And again, every time I move the brush off the screen, I'm just cleaning it off so that I have a nice clean brush with which to continue. In some cases, it's removing paint. In some cases, it's blending paint. It's all part of the same process. So in real time, this was about 30, 35 minutes worth of work. Um, condensed down to maybe about six minutes on video here. But most of that 30, 35 minutes, like I said, was me just taking breaks or changing paints or cleaning my brush and things like that. But in terms of actual time on the model, it's, it doesn't really take much more than this. And before we get too much further along, there is one bit of housekeeping that I need to take care of here. I've been kind of talking about this for the last couple of episodes that I needed to address the rear storage bin here on the turret. And this is the time to do that. The basic issue was that I had the wrong angle of where the turret, or the back of the turret, and how that attached to the turret box. So in order to fix this, I had two choices. I could create a brand new turret box with the proper dimensions, or I could modify the one I had already. In reality, I only had one choice, and that was to modify the box I had already. And that was because the turret number, number 14 that's already on the back of this, well, that's the only 14 I had left, and so I needed to maintain, or I needed to preserve that number. And so my solution was simply to add some spacers, little angled spacers to the front side of the tur turret, so that allowed me to attach it at the proper angle. Then it was just a matter of repainting. So I began with the dark German gray as the base, oversprayed that with the sand color, and then using the lacquer thinner as I had done previously, just came back and gave it the wear and the chipping. Sometimes it's hard to go back and fix your errors, at least it is for me, but I'm really glad that I came back and did this because once it's installed and I'm able to look at it, now it looks like it's supposed to and I feel much more comfortable about this model. Wow, time flies. I'm looking at my timestamps as I'm recording now and I'm seeing this is one of my longer videos in the recent past. 
So it's probably a good time to kind of wrap this one up for today. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little bit longer look at the process, just a little bit more focused. As I'm getting ready to call this episode finished, I'll leave you with a few parting shots as I weathered other parts of the model using the oils. As always, I really encourage you to hit that like and subscribe button. It definitely helps the YouTube algorithms. And as I mentioned earlier, I do have a Patreon page. The link for that is below. As a Patreon, you can look forward to a number of these longer form videos where I go more in depth showing techniques. And of course, the message board is always open where we can have discussions about a technique or modeling in general, whatever suits your fancy. And so until the next video, thank you again for watching this one. Please like and subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel, again, my Patreon page is open for business. Talk to you soon. Take care. Happy modeling.